Hello and welcome, and yes, the time has arrived. The Red Cap 51. Uh, been really looking forward to getting this. Eagerly anticipated. This has been sent to me by Steve at First Light Optics. Um, it's his personal telescope. He wants me to try it out, kick its tyres, see how it performs, and report back. So um, I've only seen a couple of brief um, pictures and videos of this, so I'm not quite sure what to expect. Uh, but I am expecting good things from what I've seen already so I'm going to open this box and uh, let's have a look at what's in there yeah. okay so we've got a little bag with the William Optics logo on it that's quite nice let's pull this out and we'll get rid of the box that's nice, I like that. That's all stitched in. The red, the red Cat logo there is actually all stitched in. That's embroidered. And the William Optics logo there also embroidered. That's really nice. So it's quite compact. I, mean, it, I can't believe there's actually a telescope in this. That's tiny. Um, yeah, so we'll have a quick look at the bag first. I mean, this is just double strap bag, double zipped, all in vinyl. Um, quite nice. I like the, really like the design. So, I'm now going to open it up and have a little look. Double zips, I always like double zips. Ah, okay, so we've got here um, two year warranty. Applies to opto mechanical assembly in any part or assembly provided with our standard instruments unless otherwise specified. That's nice, two year warranty and uh, the red cat um, stickers. There's two little stickers, so I guess you can stick them. On your bits and a little inspection checklist uh, made out in February, for February 2019. So it's certainly a brand new scope. And this is the Red Cat. Very nice. I mean, that's, this is actually um, heavier than I was expecting. I, I, I don't know what I was expecting, but this is a little heavier than I was expecting for something so compact. Uh, we will have a look at this in just two seconds. Just want to have a look at the case. It's a, a dense foam case, which is um, quite well padded. I mean, the, the top actually is really, really thick. I don't know if you can make that out, but the top padding is really quite thick. And there's a little, um, a little pocket inside the top. So um, for now, we can pop our warranty card inside there. And there's also other um, cutouts there for other stuff. So. Uh, there's two reasonably sized ones that are shaped, and uh, yeah, and that's that's okay for a little travel bag. I'm quite impressed with it. Now we shall have a little look at the red cat. Um, okay, so this is a Petzval Design 51 mm APO telescope. Um, I think it's primarily designed for imaging. It's, uh, I believe that William Optics are doing um, their own short form diagonal uh, to go on the end because it's going to need to be a screw on. There's no screw fit uh, on the end, uh, no um, compression fitting on the end as you can see. It's just a screw fit. Uh, so I think it is without doubt primarily designed for imaging. Um, I think by way of clarification of that is uh, the thing that William Optics are, are doing quite a lot now. Um, I like the, again, the screw-in um, dust cap. That's quite nice. Is that in the dust cap they have the batten off mask built in? So you take that off, spin it round. I mean, in fact, just to show you this while I'm here, the the dew shield actually screws on and forms a protector for the focus mechanism and then it screws on the ends screws the noise of the screwing and that's it and that screws on the end and you've now got your full telescope the focusing obviously is um, by helical design so it's not um, a standard focuser it's a helical focuser I mean I wouldn't say that's very smooth actually that that's and that, so this is a, a tensioner but that's actually completely loose and it's not particularly smooth it's not as smooth as I was expecting it to be but that could be because it's just brand new out of the box so 
Um, I'll check that over time, but it's not as smooth as I, I would like. Obviously with a batten off mask then, that goes on the end for focusing. So that, that's really quite handy. And then when you're done, you just screw the dust cap into the end of the batten off mask. So that's a clever design. I think William Optics are putting that on a, a few of their telescopes now, so I quite like that. A um, couple of other features, just looking at this from the off, and this is uh, gleaned from other pictures and videos and so on that I've seen as well. Uh, the rotator is uh, a great idea. I really, really like this. So you can mount your telescope on the foot, which comes with an aluminium um, Vixen style dove dovetail. Uh, it's actually reversible. You can put this both sides so it works on a standard um, photo tripod or a, a Vixen. So that's, that's again is quite a good idea and it's three positions so you can mount it uh, mid, forward and back so it's quite versatile there. The um, mount also spins so you can turn the whole thing the whole thing in the shoe and um, also once you've fixed to the tripod you undo the locking screw on the top and then it's got a built-in rotator, camera rotator with um, increments on it as well. So that is uh, a really, really good idea. I really like the idea of having the built-in rotator. Now there are a couple of screws. I think the, there's Allen keys around the outside. I'm guessing that they are for um, maybe getting access into the filter. I know you can fit a, a filter internally here, but so I'll have to have a look at that. I'm not entirely sure yet. Uh, and there's also some Allen screws on the front of the, um, the rotator here and I'm guessing they are to adjust the tilt so I'm hoping that the whole thing has come out really well collimated and aligned. The, uh, the focus ring here is like a, a rubberized material. I'm not sure how well that's going to last. It's almost like a neoprene. It feels like a neoprene. The whole thing generally is, is aluminium. It's all, all made from aluminium. The locking ring here, um, which is basically a tensioner for the focus, stop it drifting, that's aluminium, but this um, focus ring here is um, is like a soft rubber neoprene type thing. It actually, you know, you do have to give it a shove. But I'll be interested actually to see as time goes on whether uh, people or even William Optics come up with a means of uh, a belt drive auto focuser on this. Um, I'm not sure what the gearing ratio on this is. I'll, I'll have to have a look, but it's um, you know it, it takes a bit of moving so. I think that's going to be awkward to put um, an autofocuser on. I'm going to weigh it actually because it's. Um, I'm intrigued to know because this is actually quite a bit heavier than than I was expecting. I, I don't know what I was expecting, but I wasn't expecting it to be this heavy. Uh, so we put it on grams, and this actually weighs 1.57 kilos with the um, batten off mask on. So imaging weight will be 1.444 uh, kilos, so you know, about one and a half kilos um, as it sits there. So that's that's actually fairly heavy. I was quite surprised. In fact, I've got my um, my ED72 here. I, I just wanted to show you this actually. The ED72 next to it by comparison. Uh, I can't remember the weight of the ED72, but I think it was probably somewhere around there. So that's 2.1 kilos, so it is quite a bit heavier with, with all the, um, the rings on. So it's quite light, but you know, for something that small, um, I was expecting it to be a little bit lighter. But just as um, a comparison here, I just wanted to show you how small this is. The ED72, I did a review on that, and I was quite uh, impressed at how small and compact it is. Well, as you can see, this is a lot smaller. I mean, it's... Um, it's tiny by comparison so as far as uh, a travel rig goes and certainly because you can flip the dust uh, the dew shield off and turn it over I mean you're just not going to get more travel portable than that which is very nice so we'll move this out of the way now the way that I'm going to be um, I'm going to be re reviewing this over a, a, a small period I'm going to be carrying out some imaging with it as well uh, I just want this um, little initial review to be my first fault. So my first faults are actually very very nice. It's really really well made. The, the colour's odd. I mean it's a vibrant red but it's also it's got like a, a, 
a tint of pink to it. it it's a kind of a pinky red. It's quite nice. Um, in fact, I've got the Prima Luce Lab Eagle Core here as well. Um, I intend to use this with the Eagle Core. So I really want it to be a, a completely portable imaging rig. So uh, I'm going to try this mounted on top of the Eagle Core. And then uh, with the Eagle Core, you can also put the, um, the guiding rings. And I'll show you the, the guide guide tube rings on the eagle core you've got some holes on the side uh, and the guide rings sit on the side so you know this should work really really well as a, a super portable um, imaging setup obviously I'm going to be using it for uh, with a DSLR uh, the core is for DSLR imaging only so I am going to be using it with a DSLR um, and I'm hoping that this as that kind of compact setup is just going to be hard to beat you know once this is all connected together with the guide scope on the side DSLR on the back that's it that's the whole lot I'm actually going to be putting it on my um, Star Adventurer mount so I'm hoping that with that you know and how can you get more portable than that it's going to... so I'm going to take some dimensions now and um, the overall length in its fully um, extended length is 310 millimeters and that's with the um, the cover and the dew shield on with the cover off the overall length and this is over the, the cover on the back is 295 millimeters and obviously with a dew shield off uh, and, and in transport mode I really like this uh, I and mean, this is <laughs> It's a clever design. Whoever sat there and, and thought of this design um, is very clever. So the fully collapsed travel length will be 225 millimeters. Um, I think when you consider that to the collapsed travel length of the um, the 72 ED being uh, around about 410 millimeters, that's quite a difference. There, the, you know, this is uh, this is about as compact as you're going to get it. So sitting on the floor, um, height-wise, it's only uh, about 120 millimeters high. So it's it's certainly very very compact. I like it. I like the feel. I like the finish. I like the fact that when you rotate the uh, the rotator, it it doesn't feel like it's flopping around. It feels like it's really planted, and that the screw. Is literally just holding it in place it's not doing anything more I don't think that's going to start moving the um, the image you, you know you can't complain I really like the uh, the little red cat logo as well I think the logo is um, it's distinctive it's going to make it stand out you know to whoever sees this is going to know immediately what it is I, I really really like that I like the idea I'm really I'm actually looking forward to using this. Um, I don't normally image with a DSLR. I will probably use this with um, a little filter wheel and um, uh, my Starlight Express camera. But initially, I'm just going to do the DSLR imaging so that I can use this with the uh, the Eagle Core, so I can give you a uh, an update and show you this in use with both of this, uh, the the Eagle Core and the DSLR. Um, because you know, for for some people like myself, if you travel a, a fair bit. You just want to take a small hand luggage bag with all your kit in it. So this is, is really gonna gonna work well. Um, I'm actually travelling away tomorrow, so I, I'm gonna um, show you this going in a, a travel bag, so you can see it in a, a hand luggage bag to go as a, a carry-on bag on the plane. So um, hopefully you will see that I can fit it all in a bag and I can take it all, and that includes a tripod as well. So the, the whole lot. So um, well, that's my initial. Thoughts, you know, I'm quite impressed with this. This is a really, really good little setup. I'm hoping that um, with the Petswell design, it, it's going to work quite well as far as focusing goes. We've got the the, the backspacing issues of the uh, the flatteners. Um, obviously, William Optics for the Star 71. Some of them they had some issues um, with alignment. I really get the feeling with this, feeling this. Um, straight out of the box so that's not going to be the case I think that they've done their homework on this so I'm going to test it I'm going to take it out in the field I'm going to put it on my Star Adventurer I'm going to use it with the Prima Luci Labs Eagle Core and I'm going to show you it all set up 
as a little compact unit and see how it performs. So um, I will see you in the next video and uh, hopefully that's going to be out very soon because this is going away with me now uh, to try this out. So take care, bye.